Ja. Hmm. Do you have any questions? Theory crafting recap. Hmm. Mhm. Mm mm. Yeah. Um. There's something. Huh? Where did it go? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So we played 100 games. So we topped the 50 to 100. Mm. And not only did we confirm the 64, the whooping 64 percent, which was already looking like a high roll, but not only did we confirm this. But we even increased the performance. So now that's good. Mm. Very good. So now we have, um, if, we, if we make like a rotating. Now we already played 300 games. And on these 300 games, we average, what do we average? Can we do that in the head? 130, 130 plus 150 is 280 divided by 4 is exactly 70. So now we are swimming on the 70% average rotating train. That's a magical number. At least I feel that way. 69 was cooler. Yeah, yeah, about 70. I don't know. 70 is somewhat. I don't know. Sick. Um, Maurizio says defect is still very low. At 56. Oh, compared to the others. Yeah, I just wanted to wonder like who, who has a higher win rate on the defect than 56 consistently. I would be surprised. Mm. But yeah, mm. I mean, compared to the others, I think it's pretty clear that the defect is just the weakest character. Yeah, mm. I mean, if being played on high, extreme high level, I think defect is just the weakest character. Um, as being also seen also from other top players. Yeah. Um. I also think that you can scrape less percentages with him. So, defect. I don't think that you can etch out so many percentages because, you know, if I would throw a dice, I could also not etch a lot of percentage, you know. So, um, and defect kind of feels to me like a lot of dice rolling. And I'm not only talking about RNG, but also about that there are only a limited amount of builds possible. And yeah, that's a little bit sad. Hmm, can I show the Excel sheet again? Sure. I mean, there is nothing. Like, it's not much to be seen there. Hmm. It's just that we, like, the, the, the stats we keep track. Just to see, um, just to see where we are at. Um, yeah, basically this. Um,. Yeah, I mean we talked the last time already about it, um, so I don't maybe don't want to do it every time again. But last time we said we might have high roll on the ironclad, and that was the uh, the reason why we actually did another fifty, and we actually improved the ironclad percentage, which is super cool. So apparently our approach towards the ironclad seems very very neat. Um, is the watcher OP or is it just a high skill cap? I think both. Uh, probably MS office is so much nicer than library office yeah I mean they are doing the job to me at least oh. so that's fine the optimal percentage can be even higher yeah yeah we, we thought something about the optimals being here but I don't know like that's just like of course 
pure speculations or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So I don't even know. Like if you are talking about the recap, I mean I enjoyed the 50 games a lot. Not at a single point in these 50 games sample did I thought did I think oh I actually want to I actually want to finish the performance. I mean, maybe today. I don't know. Today I didn't feel very, very well. So I actually probably clashed also a little bit faster than usual or a little bit less ambitious. I don't know what it is. Maybe just didn't sleep very well. But other than that, maybe it's also at the end of a performance. I'm usually always a little bit sad that it's over. You know, N not not kidding, right? I mean, all the pressure wears off. Like you had this goal and then you play the 100 games. And then the end of the games, you're like, ah, like. The challenge comes to an end, and that feels usually a little bit sad to me. Um, so, what was the highest win streak in the second 50? I think we win streak two times eight or something, but uh, it's also, yeah, not. It's also clear that, like, if you have such a percentage, there will be win streaks. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, you also enjoyed the Ironclad, uh, the Iron Chat to watch. Yeah, I think it's it's very cool, the Ironclad. I mean, I have to say, compared with the other characters, I probably had the most fun. Um, I mean, on the Watcher, it was very special because it was my first character I played. So, I mean, the first character I played in intense or extensively. Um... So, Silent was a lot of fun too. Silent was okay. I mean, it was... I mean, I liked it, but it also got repetitive a little bit. Like, the the shift direction with... I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a common, you know? Like, Blade Dance is a common card. And a lot of Silent runs surround around the Blade Dance. It's not necessary that you go always into Blatant's direction. The Silent has some versatility. But... I, I personally do not... Like it... Tremendously that there is a common card which is like... A near auto pick which is... Of a power level as strong as the Blatant is. But I don't know. I mean... It's, it's just personal preference. That being said, I like it better than before. I mean, the poison monkey thing, that was, like, really unbearable. So, I mean, I like this better than um, than, than the silent... Uh, definitely more than before. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, BJ Slayer says it's either poison or shift build. Is there more? Yeah, we talked about it, right? I mean, it's either poison monkey, it's ninja warrior, or it's discard king. Whereas Discard King usually complements the one or the other. So if you go for a Discard... I love Discard, but it's usually complementing a Shift build or a Poison build. Usually a Shift build. So basically what you say, yeah, it's like probably two to three main builds. And to put things into perspective, I have the feeling that the Defect has exactly one main build, if you want to say so. And this main build, who would have thought, evolves around Orbs and Focus. Yeah. There are some minor infinites. Sometimes you can also burst a lot of energy into some things. Sometimes you can also... I mean, we also had a lot of wins with dark orbs and stuff like this. But more or less, you have one main build. Maybe you can deviate sometimes into some other builds. But not very often. So, it seems to be... Yeah, it seems to me that it's like one main build... And the other, all the other stuff, halfway evolves around that. It's still not completely brain dead because you still have to get there, but you know, more or less, that's the thing. One to two main builds. I don't know. Yeah, it feels felt really monotonous, like really monotone. Honestly, like on the defect, on the we had been, we did two fifty game samples. The first 50 game sample felt super monotone after 35 games, 40 games. And the second sample 
felt also monotone after 35 games or something. The silent, as we said, has like three main builds. So that's already more than on the defect. Honestly, for me, it's also more... Oh, yeah, one big thing about the defect. Um, it's a lot about setup. And setup doesn't mean setup, but it means, hey, draw your powers early. So if you draw your powers early, you you're fine. If you do not draw your powers early, you die. So... Do I like that? Uh, let me think. No, because it let like you you lose player agency. So that's something which is also better on the silent, which is generally better where you do not need to completely overly set up. I give you one example. You have the ironclad and you pick a demon form, and now you build your deck around demon form. But the premise is that you draw demon form within the first one or two turns, and if you don't, you get garbage. So this is not my imagination of a fun game, you know. And that's also why I pick so rarely Demon Form. Because I think it's just... All those things, you know. Where you say, hey, it's good if you draw a turn 1. And then suddenly you do not draw a turn 1 or 2 and suddenly you get, like, garbage, right? That's why I also love, like, silent shift builds much more than poison builds, you know. Poison builds are very dependent on drawing your poison and catalyst early. Preferably exactly in this order. Draw poison first, then draw catalyst. And that is like so broke back, it's un unimaginable. So I'm super happy that Silent is in a different place now. That you are that if you play broke back poison, you're probably having a lower win rate. And that's also where it belongs, the crap poison, right? I mean I like hate poison. But Generally, you know, I don't know, like, it's mechanical as well, but it's just a personal preference. So, so much about the silent. Yeah. The Watcher, it, the versatility comes from the boss swap. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't even argue that the Watcher always plays the same, because, like, you have different kind of ways to play the Watcher. Um, uh, but, like, the most preferred way would be to play, like, to get... Talk to the hands and a lot of attacks. And it gets interesting if you do not receive talk to the hands. Because then you have to also deviate to different ways. And I also love the versatility of the stand, stands and stands swap and all those things. Uh, what pressure points? Yeah, no. Pressure points is not one of those things which is possible. <laughs> but um, how many times did I play pressure points in the watcher runs? Yeah, zero. Um, so... Um, so the boss swaps yeah because you always boss swap on the watcher that's probably the correct play um it's um you have 20 different ways to play the watcher depending on the random boss swap relic you have to play the watcher different and the versatility comes from that yeah hmm, Tim makes that is what not zero you think no i think it was zero i think it was clean zero yeah, I I don't think that I picked uh, any pressure point build in this 50 sample. Yeah, because it sucks so hard. Um, you're almost sure there was one one pressure point kill. You mean with infinite or something where we already won and then I pick a pressure point to 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 meme, right? May, maybe maybe something like this. Um. Oh, I took it with a choker. With a choker. Hmm. No, I think earlier runs. Oh, Pandora's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. No, no, no. Sure, sure. Um, no, no, absolutely. Like, if the Pandora's box uh, has um, pressure... Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and that's also clear, right? I mean, with the, with the Pandora's box, you also need to deviate in a very specific playstyle. Hey, just RKN. Thanks very much for your sub, man. So, yes, depending on the boss swap, you have to play a completely different playstyle. And But on the Ironclad, you have, like, a lot of things you can play, like self wound, self harm, strength, with power or with linear strength build. You can play barricade into a uh, block. You can play um, Corruption in, with Dark Embrace and Barricade. Or you can play Corruption. You can play Barricade and Trench without Corruption. Um, you can play Dead Branch Corruption. You can play Sometimes Infinite. 
bears it's rather rare, rare and those things. So yeah, so much about those. Mm. So, what's going on? Yeah, um, do you have any other questions to these ironclad things? Doesn't feel like the ironclad buff last patch were too impactful? No, of course not. Why would they? I mean, like the ironclad uh, changes, there were only the ones which fixed like two bad cards. So, yeah. Best near option for ironclad? Yeah, I guess like the rare cards are pretty good, right? But generally, like, of course, if you can receive a relic, just the usual ones, right? 250 gold is nice. Yeah. <clears throat> and if, if rare card, which usually? Well, the ones which are good, right? I mean, um, if it's uh, like, if you, if it's a start. Now, yeah, Klar, barricade is acceptable. Berserk is trash. Bludgeon is acceptable, right? I mean, early it's like absolutely okay. Then you don't need to pick too many garbage cards. Brutality is acceptable. Corruption, even that you can. I mean, before you pick nothing, you can still pick this. Demon form is acceptable. Double tap isn't, yeah. Um, Exhume isn't acceptable. Feet is great, yeah. Fiendfire is great. Immolate is great. Impervious is absolutely okay. You can block Nob and Lager William with that for one turn. Um, Juggernaut. This is so bad. This is so bad. Like, what is, what is that, yeah? I mean, they could have really shown maybe this card a little bit like This is so crappy. Yeah. This is unbelievable. Yeah, Limit Break also sucks. Offering, yeah, whatever, Reaper, whatever. Hey, Loctow, thanks very much for the sub, man. Um, like, Hemo and Rupture were still barely picked. Yeah, because first of all, they are uncommon. Rupture sucks still. And, yeah. So... Yeah. No, I think the game is in a good, good place. I also love that they don't overdo it with the buffs, but they don't, uh, they only buff like the very needed cards, like Blood I think really, I mean, before it was just a complete no card, and Hemo was also pretty bad, so, mm. hmm, hmm, yeah, I mean, all in all, I guess, yeah, are we satisfied with the performance? Yes, absolutely. And the question is also what to do next. Yeah, I mean, maybe if there are no questions about the run, I mean, we will probably talk about the run the next days anyways. I mean, we don't need to force it. I mean, it will come, we don't need to force it. It will come over time as well. Like, we now played the performance, maybe, I mean, what did I learn? I don't even know what I learned. I learned that perfect the strike is perfect that pos perfectly possible. Uh, <laughs> that is perfectly possible. Flex still sucks. I didn't really change my opinion on any cards, honestly. Um, like that could have been a question, right? Did I did I change my opinion on any cards? Not really. Yeah. Uh, oh, what I also love about the ironclad is that many picks are very dependent, like. You can, some picks are completely boss dependent. You have like one card solutions against elites and against bosses. So Evolve, for example, you can never pick against a Guardian. But against the other two, you can, you know. Feel No Pain, you can never pick against a Guardian. But against, like, for example, Slime Boss, you can. And, or before, before cubes, it's like single handed. So if Fire Breathing as well. Like, you can pick early, but not against Guardian. So there are many cards we, where you really, really have to where you really have to um, respect the boss. I also like that Metallicize is so strong, Act 1. I love Metallicize, I don't know. Do you remember the 5 Metallicize run? 5 Metallicize plus run? 
Yeah, fire breathing can basically so do the boss. Exactly. Oh yeah, pommel strike. Yeah, amazing, right? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Chinese Democrats says, "Well, you don't pick cards, which I think they suck. So why should your opinion change when I rarely never play them?" Um. Uh, there are nearly no cards which are automatically disregarded and even these you can receive in transforms so i guess that's also the answer to the question um yeah i mean how many cards do I and also keep in mind if they come upgraded usually you have a window to pick them and then you pick them and you realize they're still not good you know and so yeah no absolutely um which of the cards do i automatically disregard well, Flex is one of the cards where I really think... I mean, Clash is also pretty bad. <coughs> I guess there are some some cases where I would actually pick it, but not many. Flex, I think it's like abysmal. Like, really so bad. And we had sometimes also a, a transform into Flex, but... I don't know. Um, other than that... What did we not pick? Yeah, Thunderclap, for example, I deem to be pretty bad. Now, upgraded is much better than non-upgraded. Speaking of which, we saw that like in the last run. So it was upgraded, I picked it. I was not very satisfied, despite it being upgraded. Which shows me that not upgraded is obviously even worse. Yeah. Flex pick it with pellets? No, I don't think so. Like, the thing is that I just compare this with Inflame. Inflame, you get it permanent for one energy more. I mean... Um... Yeah, so um, yeah, flex plus can be good sometimes. We also already picked flex plus sometimes, but I mean it just showed. Um, True grid is also pretty bad. I think people overrate true grid quite a lot. Um, so. Yeah, Wild Strike is one of these. But here again, you know, I mean, Wild Strike I usually completely disregard. Despite of that, we had to run where we picked it. Yeah, so it's it's not, uh, you know, it's um, yeah. But what else? Uh, dual wield is pretty bad. Mm. And whenever I pick it, I also usually regret it. Fire breathing is really bad in late game. I think we also. I mean, here again, we picked it last game, and it's just not. Why do I dislike True Grid? Sorry if you missed the reasoning. Um, True Grid not upgrade is abysmal because it blocks seven and exhausts one card at random. I mean, what's good at that card, right? And the problem is, so you need to put the upgrade. But even after the upgrade, you know that this is an upgraded card. Seriously, I mean. That's pretty mediocre for an upgraded card. Mediocre bad, to be precise. Now, how it usually works is it gets better with corruption. You might think. But no, it doesn't. Because, hey, if you have corruption, you actually do not want to exhaust that many cards. So, there is just no real spot for this. We can also make, like, um, by the way, the direct comparison. So, please have this in mind, what True Grid does. 7 block exhaust, 9 block exhaust, okay? So just keep that in mind and let's take a look at another card which people might not even find that amazing. Burning Pack. So this is not even that busted, not at all. Like, And just compare this with Triggered Priest. So a not upgraded, draw two cards is better than seven block, exhaust one specific card is much better than a random card and upgraded. You both exhaust like one specific card, so one card draw weights up against three block. And the burning plate is not amazing enough to justify it. I mean, it's not like, hey, but that's also an uncommon and blah blah. But what? Against two block. No, no, it's against three block. The one gives you nine block, the other one gives you three cards. So every card is like three block. Yeah. Is this just reflecting the rarity difference? Yeah, yeah, but it's not, that's what I'm saying. It's not that this is amazingly strong. Yeah. 
Oh, Blur is doing the math for you guys. Okay, so... Um, so... Uh, yeah, Infernal Blade, for example. I would actually like to play that more often, because random attack on the Ironclad is actually quite expensive. But it's very difficult to find a good spot for the Infernal Blade. Because in Act 1, it's a skill against the knob. And, it, and, and in the Act 2 forward, random is not, like, random attack is not very powerful. Um, do I ever pick Combust? Yeah, sure. Why not? No. Regular Charge is also one of these cards I just don't pick, yeah. Um. So, yeah, the Seeing is Searing Blow. Searing Blow I never pick. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty pretty sad. The thing blow is really bad. Several soul? Again, we had some runs where we actually used several soul. Yeah, absolutely. When you pick pummel, only if you have strength. Yeah, or if it's an empty pick, or if you have the boot. If you have the boot, it's pretty sick. If you have the akabeko, well. Hmm? Fosmonot says, if you're in the specific case where you feel no pain and evolve, regular charge seems good to you. Yeah, but the problem is even then not, because then you're probably already in Act 2 and probably 0 energy, 7 damage is already falling off, right? So, yeah. <coughs> yeah, super sad. So... What do we want to do in the, like, uh, what? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, not now, but I mean, generally speaking. Life talk. <laughs> now I mean, like, plans to come. A little bit sad, I mean... I now I now grinded myself to the to his latest fire skill set. I guess I guess now I just ditches into the uh, ditch it into a corner. What a pity, man. Am I sticking to slay the fire? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Um, I was wondering like what what there is. I was, for example, thinking about the defect another 50 games. Honestly, I have to. I, I I just disregard it. I don't have time for that. Like, really not. I mean, I, I tried the defect out. It was okay while it lasted. I mean, there are some interesting things of the defect as well. But I don't know. I mean, there are so many things which I just don't like about the defect that I guess the the. I mean, it was good to try it out, but yeah. So. Hmm. <coughs> so yeah, that's that. Mm. Yeah, see Yoshi says 50 no boss swaps on the Watcher. You know, on the Watcher, whenever I run around with 3 energy, I feel crippled. So, I don't exactly have the ambition to always go into Act 1 and feel like crap because I didn't boss swap, you know. Um, I can play Classic Mode in Hearthstone. Yeah, just to say that again, like Classic Mode for Hearthstone, um, there's literally no reasoning to do that, right? I mean, whatsoever. Um, really not. I mean, I rather enjoy like the yeah. If you if you have some like room for experiment, like yeah, to to find out new things. So it's it's like this is like just burnt. How do you say burnt? Scorched earth. It's just scorched earth for me. Hmm. RPG? No, I usually don't enjoy RPG that much. I don't know. It's um, I like these roguelikes, like Slay the Spire, you know. <laughs> um, I 
Have I tried leather runs? Do I prefer only Ascension 20? I actually don't mind also rotating, but um, only if it's something new, which is also interesting. And I guess like with different characters, like rotating 1 to 20, uh, Bela already did, right? So I guess if it would have been interesting, it would have been like the first player to do that. But just like also doing it, I don't know, doesn't feel like a challenge you know um i mean it's a challenge but not a challenge you know being the second in something yeah i don't know you know what i'm saying right um Yeah, the Watcher. We could actually play another 50 games, but if I would play another 50 Watcher games, I would probably need to admit that I high rolled the Watcher games, and I'm not willing to do that. So, why would we do such a thing? If I can just preserve the honor and glory without even breaking a finger. Yeah, yeah. That would be freaking this stupid. Yeah, Crimson says Lady Spy is so good at making other games uh, look unappealing. Indeed. Seriously. I mean, I guess Monster Train would be something I would play if Lady Spy doesn't exist. And now if you play Monster, I mean, I feel like always like playing a cheap copy of Slayer Spire. I mean, it probably didn't help that they copied a lot of stuff one to one. Like, it's uh, just feel cheap to me. I don't know, personal opinion, right? Um, Dream Quest. Yeah, I already clashed a lot of Dream Quest, man. Uh. Hmm? Darkest Dungeon, but Darkest Dungeon is already quite uh, like out quite a long time, right? So yeah, but I think the same applies also to Darkest Dungeon. I don't know. I mean, without the cards, I feel the player agency goes down. Mm, I, I mean, maybe it's uh, just a little bit different. But, yeah, I don't know. No, Darkest Dungeon is okay, you know, it's, yeah. It's just that the card thing just falls out of the window. Like, and because of that, it feels more repetitive to me, honestly, Darkest Dungeon. It feels like your your people do have, like, specific positions. You're repeating the same moves. Um, feels more repetitive to me. Much, much more repetitive. I don't know. Uh, it's... Hmm... No, I mean, I, I'm I'm thinking about the Watcher, um, but then I, I don't know, you know, when I played the first 50 games of the Watcher, I was really insane tryhard, and I don't know, I mean, we could play, Watcher is fun, you know, Watcher is, I mean, it's it's OP, it's a, I mean, I don't know, like, how we did it was pretty, I mean, you know, we played, like, four games on Ascension 19 or something, right, and just for fun or five at four or five and you know that was pretty cool you know you play without pressure you just click it you know not click it through right i mean you still need to play but it's not like 
you have to pay attention to every little bit i mean we still want all of them but <laughs> it's i don't know you know watcher is really punishing like you fuck something up you get wrecked like you get one bad like you don't set up one bad like one shuffle like you don't set up a specific shuffle and you, you don't get the life back you know it's not um, that you have so many re replenishments like the only runs which are which are chill with the watcher are the meat on the bone runs because there you can just you know spew around as much as you want but um yeah Thoughts of Loop Hero. Yeah, I didn't like it too much. Meteor Krumit's tail, I actually played some. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I couldn't get 100% into it. Um, I won the missions and all that. Th but whatever, right? Um, it didn't feel like that I want to sink, sink myself into that. Hmm, they are billions? No, no, I played that through. They are billions I played through when, when it came out. Yeah. I mean, guys, I I, 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 I I tried all those games, you know. It's um, uh, like, that's like, gaming is also my hobby. So, I always check out any game which is above 90% on Twitch. And believe me, if it has more than 90% on Twitch, uh, on Twitch, on Steam, I probably just purchased it. Yeah. And then I probably also played it. Yeah. Um Gordian quest I actually downloaded as well. I only played half an hour. I don't know. I mean I started it and i mean i looked at it i compared it with slay the spire <laughs> and uninstalled it again uh i don't know i didn't even refund it i never refund i just keep them in my library kind of like a hoarder <laughs> i'm the game hoarder not the loot hoarder i'm the game hoarder <laughs> What myth god? Yeah, I mean, again, like you don't have infinite time, so yeah. Basically, what snoozing on the job says, like guarding quest compared with play the spire, like it's always the same, right? Like if I, if I compare it with play the spire, I'm just like, yeah, let's play some play the spire instead. I mean, that being said, when I when I first touched the Watcher, I think my gameplay definitely improved from that point or from that moment. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, when we played the last Watcher runs, I also felt like that it was even easier than before. But I don't know. Um. um Also blue red blue red yeah yeah exactly I don't like paradox strategies. What do you mean paradox strategies? Is that a game? Paradox strategies I, I have not played. What is that? Paradox strategy, yeah? What? I don't know. What's that? Oh. The developer. And what does he develop?
Ah, okay, the Crusaders King. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, Stellaris. Yeah, I've downloaded Crusader Kings, but I couldn't really get warm with that. I don't know. It felt a little bit overwhelming. I also didn't like that, you know. I don't know. It's like the Civ style is you build your own civilization. That was like you, you have. You can take a tribe or a civilization which is already there and can replay that. I don't know. Mm. Overwhelming, yeah, yeah, it was kind of overwhelming, but I don't know. So, yeah, it's not exactly that I'm also necessarily looking for a new game. I mean, I guess usually the games come to you if they are really that amazing, right? Naya, for example, whatever. Monster Train. I mean, I didn't like it, but, you know, it's not that you can overlook Monster Train. Like, if you're in the genre or if you like the genre, you probably played it at some point, right? And then, so it's it's not, <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Maybe take a break and play something for fun. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, most likely. I mean, um, yeah, rather play Slay or another game. I don't know. I mean, Slay is a lot of fun, but uh, I think I think everything is already covered in the Spire somehow. Yeah. The new what? The thing he wants most is a new Slay the Spire character. Yeah, I don't know, but only a good one. So, I'm not even sure about that, but uh, is now yeah, look, if you have ironclad, I mean, okay, something like a defect, it's for me personally very whatever, you know, like it's, it's just, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, but um, they made only good ones otherwise, right? Like it's a watcher, silent and ironclad are so versatile and different in what they do. I mean, that's super cool. Yeah. So, sure. Yeah. Uh, Mm. Yeah, about the, the rotating world record or whatever. I mean, <laughs> it's just that I so not uh, care about wind wind streaks that it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I mean, we know we know what we play over a rotating. We we play seventy percent over a rotating, and that's it. Yeah, and then you can just make the math, and then you see how often we streak or how often we will streak. Yeah. So I don't think. Um, what times are you? We know that you want that record. Uh, sorry to disappoint, man. <laughs> I'm not interested. <laughs> uh, um. Uh, not at all. Um, so yeah, yeah. I guess I will. I will go into the deep think tank. I will go into the deep think tank. Think about what to do next. Well, I went yesterday to some super supermarket. Yeah, yeah, super supermarket, and I bought a lot of amazing. And probably unhealthy items. And I will eat these later. Roasted chestnuts. I bought. And I, I got coated cashews. And also strawberry ice cream sorbet. Yeah, I had a Kaufrausch. I was somehow I was super hungry when I even went there and I just bought everything. And 
and now we have it at home and I will probably eat it and yeah it's not very healthy but yeah okay am Naschmark nee nicht am Naschmark den Merkur one last watch around as a farewell yeah I don't know about farewell maybe I just um, I, I will think about like what what I would actually enjoy or what not and yeah are you talking about the watcher i don't know i mean it's just like in i feel 90 is einfach voll pervers i mean 94 is is 16 to 1. i mean every time you know like it's so it puts so much pressure i mean 16 to 1 to keep a 16 to 1 means i mean it basically means you have to streak every time every time you start you know you have to streak more than anybody else in the world has ever streaked every time like i mean 16 wins one loss 20 wins one loss 12 wins one loss i mean it's like there's yeah it's a hey, it's so like Not yeah. What Chonzo asked, can I ask a weird question? Do you like your community and do you find it more rewarding playing a game on stream as opposed to alone? It completely depends on the genre. If I play something for recreational purposes, I think I'm just better off alone. Because I'm staring at like whatever. I play a Civ game and you know... I don't know and then I'm thinking okay what do I want to do today and I'm thinking maybe yeah maybe I play a game and then I, I don't want to have it too stressful so I probably play it well either I played on Emperor or on Immortal depends like there are some cultures where I can play Immortal and still win probably 95% or like otherwise I play Emperor because I know that I kind of automatically win and this would be super boring on stream and uh, wahrscheinlich habe ich auch dann 100 Klugscheißer da irgendwie im Channel, which tell me like how easy Emperor is and I don't need this crap. Um, so I just enjoy my time and I build my city and I'm sometimes staring at the screen for 30 minutes and I'm so happy that everything works out and like watch the animations and probably also just stop the game after playing for hours because it gets like a chore and it like gets long and usually i play only to the middle of the game and while to stream that is pretty doesn't make a lot of sense and i also enjoy it more alone now for games like slay the spire specifically if you might make a performance i mean slay the spire is one of these games if you do not challenge yourself it's actually pretty arbitrary right like if you're saying like if you're playing slay the spire without any kind of challenge right if you say hey i played slay the spire but i don't want to get better it's not even good, you know, it's okay, like it can be fun, but I think much more fun is to say, okay, I want to get better at Slay the Spire and I try to measure it somehow, right? And like some goal, it doesn't matter what kind of goal that is. It could be to play Ascension 1 to 10 consecutive, right, if you're starting off, but, or just reaching Ascension 20 with whatever amount of runs, whatever, I don't know, right, but some arbitrary goal. And... I like uh, to, yeah, to, like, that's kind of also, like, a, a, a control of that, right? Like, that, that I'm saying, okay, I, I don't tilt, I try to never tilt. Like, kind of a, a dialogue, right? That I say, okay, if I have this performance, I cannot come, like, I cannot say, hey, I do a 50 game performance, and a week later I say, hey, I, I... I decided different, right? I mean, I can do that if I really, like, if I really think it's fucked up, like with the defect, for example, that, that it fucks me up, then I can do that, but generally I would like not to do that, right? So, and and this gives me something like a challenge, yeah? So, for those games, I like more if I stream them, yeah? Hope that answers the question. Hmm? What is with the max? 
What shield? Marcus says Max is desperate because of this? Because of what? Oh, the pressure of a 16 to 1 win rate on the Watcher. Where, where is Max currently? Is he, is he closing, is he closing up on the 90? I, 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 I haven't, I haven't taken track. Ah, Sean says, I have been with you for Hearthstone, Gwent, Artifact, and Slay the Spire, and I just feel this is your best curated community. Slay the Spire fans are much more mature than or something. Well, I guess it's rather that it's not for the masses, right? I mean, those who, like, are always playing what people tell them to play or what is currently in, they are not playing Slay the Spire any longer. So maybe just a filtered community as well. Yeah. And putting that aside, nobody can watch me who doesn't really care about the game, right? I mean, the approach I do, like, if you don't, if you're not interested for the game, you cannot watch me. Ah, uh, it's, like... But then again, I also don't know why people watch anyways, they clicky-click. I don't understand it, honestly. But that's just me. I mean, now nah, what I'm saying is, like, uh, I mean, I understand why people don't watch me because, like, it's, like, very... Like, sometimes it's long, long, like, very long, like, explanation-wise and all that stuff. Mm. So I, I can definitely get behind that. But, like, watching somebody who clicks through the spire and you know that it's not good gameplay? Nah, I don't know. I mean... It's yeah, maybe it's different. Maybe it's... No, well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I do understand the rationale, but it's difficult for me to really understand, you know. Mm. Do you remember any cool or really bad place that chat came up with? Yeah, not playing the disarm against the heart in the first iteration of moves, not saving 30 damage, or no, not even sa not saving 45 life to disarm the heart later, which never happened because we died, obviously, because we took 45 damage for no reason. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Or do you mean in general? Because I had one other experience where somebody advised me that the time meter will 100% split at exactly half life. So because of that, I adjusted the time meter to exactly half life. Do you know what it did next? Yeah. Oh, oh, and I also uh, I also put uh, the counter to 11 because I knew I knew that he will buff next. Yeah, and what happened next was that he hit us for 50. And I only could play one card and died. Um, yeah. Other than that. Hmm. I mean, I only remember the times where it also really tucked me up. I mean, a lot of these suggestions which I just ignored. Who cares, right? But I'm just talking about the suggestions I actually followed. <laughs> and, yeah. The time meter one being a very nice debate, by the way. Um, oh, six into three was the last time you saw. Interesting.
Ah, yeah, a blur suggested one time to buy the Orikaikum at some shop. I was very reluctant, but in the end, I actually followed his suggestion, spent a whooping 170 gold for the Orikaikum, and I think it blocked... one time in the entire run. And even there, it only blocked for plus one. Uh, that was pretty bad. Huh. I remember something where Blur also sucked me in at some point. It was Act 1. And it was something about life. Oh yeah, Blur thought we were swimming in life. So we can now go heavy farming. And I wasn't so sure, but Blur doubled down on that. And a second later, or actually a minute later, we were dead. But yeah. Um, uh, if I could just forget all this garbage. Why do I remember this crap? Man, oh man. Because, because I care. Hmm. Man. Man. Um. <laughs> the this I'm sit deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there were some things, yeah, it's true. Um Ah, Shonzo comes up and says, Wait, man, you called out all the bad suggestion, but you actually forgot mine. Yes, Shonzo suggested um, the Berserk pick directly before the Act 2 boss. Yeah. And the Act 2 boss was the Automaton. Yeah. So I was like, man, does Berserk not suck? And Shonzo doubled down on Berserk. It was an empty pick. It was empty pick or Berserk. And Shonzo doubled down on the Berserk, and I picked it. Yeah. With the result that against the Automaton, we drew it and we realized we can never deploy it. We can never play it. Yeah. So that resulted us in... And we were very close. We were very close. So we even survived the Hyper Beam, and we stalled it out until turn 10. And turn 10, we would have had lethal, but unfortunately, we drew Berserk again. And so we... we yeah. So we, we missed Lethal just barely. But yeah, thanks very much for reminding me. Did I just say something about if I could just forget all the garbage? But yeah, hmm, interesting. Um, Peter said the first Ritual Dagger was a real one. And we never found out uh, if any were real. You're still uh, confused. Yes, we found that actually out. So if you if you have only one target in the hand, you can actually do that. And the first target is still the original. But if you have more than one target, none will be the original dagger. Yeah, I usually don't do the same mistake twice. It's true. Yeah. Oh, he says the best oriented game with the one HP head but boomerang miracle. Yeah, that was an amazing one. Yeah, where we actually went to one one HP against Decker and Donu. And usually once we kill Donu we don't die against Decker. But in this case we were really low on one HP and we needed to <laughs> we needed to manipulate head but boomerang upgraded um, in order to make it happen. Yeah.
What do I remember? Any moment where chat succession won you the game? <laughs> um. Hey, the name is Vin says, when Chet wanted demon form and it carried, didn't win you the game but made it a whole lot easier. Man, you have not been here the last 1000 hours. Chet always suggests the demon form. Like, this is literally, I mean, this literally does not count. If everybody suggests a card and there are three cards to be picked and everybody suggests one third, one third, one third, that does not like, if I then pick one of these three and it wins as a run, that does not qualify, man. <laughs> that doesn't qualify. Okay. Yeah, and the limit break, I, I don't think that limit break ever, like, fixed anything. Um. Um, Prima, Justin, ask any interest in PvP games on stream again? Naya, look, the problem with PvP games for me, um, I mean... As you know, I don't play shooters or MOBAs. I mean, I do play them, but I don't play them professionally, right? So, in a PvP game, that's like has to be something like a card game. Yeah, something like Hearthstone, for example, right? Or Gwen. And <clears throat> the problem I usually encounter with PvP games are just, I think, some, some problems which just lie in the nature of these games. Yeah. Um, I cannot exactly pinpoint, but a lot of it is that you that a lot of things are being done to, for example, get people to buy new cards. It goes like this: like you could keep a good game, but because if you would just keep the game, people would buy less cards. They just change the game, and whether it's a good direction or not a good direction doesn't really matter because it's like the focus is just different. You know, like for me, if I play today, Aspire, I have the feeling. The guys want to make the game better and that results in a very good game which makes a lot of people happy right and if the focus is selling the most amount of packs you know you will just have a lot of garbage which is just not cool you know like where you would say hey why did they do that and the answer is yeah because they want to sell more packs you know and you're like okay but that's not exactly quality for game play right or quality for the gamer itself so um, and the same goes over and over again you know like for example this grinding loop you know you have you have seen that like in games for example with a letter you have like for example monthly re letter resets right and the reason for that is not like that people can 
compare them over and over again or to, to, to keep things fair. But the idea behind this is just like if you reset a letter, people have a new feeling of accomplishment and then they grind the letter down again. Um, and in order to grind the letter, they also need new cards and yala, 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 right? So I just have the feeling that I don't really want to support those things. Yeah, if I stream something, I also support it automatically, right? I make free advertisement for 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 for, uh, for things I stream, and automatically, right? It just it gives exposure and all those things. So I usually don't want to give exposure to games where I think the customer is getting ripped off, right? I mean, it's just not where I see myself. Yeah, and a lot of PvP games are of this nature right where there's just like some things are being done where i just ethically also disagree with uh, probably also some of the reasons why you don't see me advertising some mobile games for example right like Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends, for example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. You wouldn't believe how much money I shoot into the wind by not advertising Raid Shadow Legends. But uh, I absolutely stick to that. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. Did I say my artifact collection? No, I still have it. Also with the 168 tickets I have next to it. Are they called tickets? I don't even know. Like the, the currency. <laughs> I'm actually a millionaire and like artifact. I have 168 of these things, I think. Yeah. Uh, a lot, a lot. I, I bought a lot to use them because everybody told me we will waste them. And then we just won all our drafts, right? Like, what could have we done? A weird break on the side. <laughs> okay. Yeah, instead I should have probably invested into... Uh, into here things, yeah. Into anything, honestly. Into Bitcoin or into here... Um, to the moon. <laughs> GME. Okay. Yeah, GameStop. Yeah. What what are the what are my beloved GameStop stocks doing? I mean, not that I own any of them. Uh, One hundred and ninety-six. Yeah, seems to be very stable. Actually, they are really stable now. Yeah, Wahnsinn. Wahnsinn. Hey, I remember you debating an X pick in draft, saying it was a noob trip for forty-five minutes? Uh, no. Certainly not. What? No. No way. I actually had the highest win rate in beta uh, in, in in drafting, by the way. Ah, but probably whatever. Yeah. But I would really wonder about the X thing that um, 
didn't fit the draft at the time. No, I was always a red. It fit very, very much. I, I drafted a lot of red. Like, that was amazing. Yeah. What? Bitcoin is now at 58k. No, where's Echt jetzt? Echt jetzt? Ah, yeah, okay, dollars, you say. Okay, okay. <coughs> Do you know the guy who bought, like, a pizza? For... <laughs> Uh, how much? Ten, ten thousand. <laughs> that guy is now sitting in the corner and like, hmm. <laughs> My life could have been different if I would have not ate, <laughs> if I would have not eaten this freaking pizza. Yeah, yeah I know, I know he... He, he pretends that he's fine with his life choice. Mm, right. That's right. Okay. But yeah, we all hope it was a good pizza. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay. So... Yeah, I make a... a bit? That's just hindsight. <laughs> it's been on pizza, no pizza, pizza. Uh huh. There's a guy with 300k Bitcoin on heart, right? But he doesn't know the password. <laughs> okay. And he has done eight out of ten tries to get it back. Oh really? I have I have to Google that. Oh yeah, we also got bitcoins. Actually, actually, I am in the Bitcoin business now that you say it. My wife just showed me because I got paid uh, for something um, in the past in bitcoins, and I ne actually never touched them. Okay, to be pre to be precise, the wife coach got paid because she won artifact tournament. Yeah, because she won an artifact tournament. Talking about artifact, yeah. How much? In the thousands, guys. In the thousands. Hey, Jana, put up my name. Um. Oh, uh, did I say in the thousands? Uh, when I meant in the thousands, I didn't talk about thousands of Bitcoin, but actually thousands of dollars. Okay. No, it's actually less than one Bitcoin. <laughs> it's it's actually less than one Bitcoin. But but uh, I mean, still unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. I mean, not even like yeah. It's, yeah. Still good money, yeah. Oh. Still good money. Uh, now it actually is reasonable to just let it stand there. Okay, guys. Okay, I get you some AMA. Do you have some some questions? What? Randy also owns less than one Bitcoin. Yeah, so when I said less than one Bitcoin, I didn't mean much less than one Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. Um, Yeah. 
If you could give Chad one piece of solid life advice, what would it be? Hmm. I have no clue, man. <laughs> I have no clue. Need to be a little bit more specific, I guess. For the terrible life coach? No, no, you cannot say like you cannot say that. Like I actually think it's pretty horrible if you like shower somebody with advices where you don't even have like individuality. Like it's of course very individual from person to person. Also about the open windows, like what helps them the most and all those things. Like Random advices, which are probably not even that great. You can get anywhere. I don't know. It's not, um, yeah. I mean, of course, there are the standard things, right? But it's not the one advice, you know? It's like, don't take too many drugs. Don't numb yourself. But if you don't do it already, well, that's not a good advice for you if you don't do it already, right? So, do, what uh, OGs asked, do you think you would still be happy without being a, a, a multimillionaire? Um, you framed the question wrong. Like the question is probably, do you think you would be still unhappy without being a multimillionaire? I mean, it's, um, who says I'm happy, you know, like... <laughs> Just in in just in, just implying things, right? Just implying things. Hmm. I seem happy. Wow. Well, depends, I guess. Who's that guy who says? Uh, Who's that guy who said, um, money doesn't make happy, but it cries better in a taxi, in a taxi than in the, ach, was heißt in Straßenbahn, in the, na, wie heißt in Straßenbahn, ich weiß es gar nicht, in the tram, yeah, it cries better, it cries better in a taxi than in the tram, yeah. This is here, um, uh, wie heißt er denn? Ja, Pole mit dem, um, oh, hey, ich vergesse echt den Namen. Wer ist denn das? Wer ist denn das? Hier, ähm, um, William, ja, ich weiß ja, wer das ist, aber ich hab den Namen vergessen. Egal. Ähm, um, Ranitsky, danke, ja. Reiche, reich, äh, reiche, reiche, nein, Ranitsky. Ja, yeah, exactly. Mm. So. Yeah. You want to know what keeps me busy? This, this Corona thing. Seriously. I mean, it's now, it's now over a year. It's now over a year, guys. And I'm I'm on sitting out here, you know. How so? Yeah, I stay at home and I'm sitting out here in front of my streaming station. And I think if it just distract me enough, I can basically make like a sitting out, you know. Um, like The Sims. Do you know The Sims? Like You can press a button and time just passes, you know. Time pass button. And Corona sucks so hard for me. Like COVID sucks so hard for me that I'm like... Sometimes, I mean, as much as I value lifetime, you know, I'm sometimes thinking maybe I, sh I should just press this timeout button and, you know, and then the simulation, the simulation proceeds. Yeah. 
Yeah, also Sean says, I can tell you I was much happier with life and I had nothing and the package of noodles every day. Yeah, it's also about the, I think it's uh, also about the perspective, you know. I mean, for me, somehow, but I don't know exactly know whether that's for everybody, the older I get and the more I actually keep looking at stuff, the more disillusioned I also become, like from humanity, from people, not even like personal disappointments. Uh, I think I think I chose my friends wisely enough that I do not get personally disappointed on a regular basis. So the long-term friends I do have are still long-term friends. And um, that's also very nice. But I don't know, just... Maybe that's a little bit too pessimistic, but there's so much trash going on in the world and I cannot even pinpoint target it because it's so much, you know, um, things I disagree with, but also like people I disagree with, I mean, obviously this, the people I disagree with, but also like people who, who live, um, for the values, like for the ethic, moral, uh, moralic values, it's really like very rarely to be seen. And I don't know whether that have, has always been like this. Probably yes, right? But it's just like the more you realize it, the more, I don't know, you know, 20 years ago when I was still young, 25 years ago when I was still young, I actually thought I had like some perceptions about the world, right? And I had high hopes, you know. I thought like something sucked, but I also knew that I that I don't know a lot, right? And I was always th thinking I probably just didn't get it, like how things work, you know. Um, yeah, or partly I also thought I, I got how things work, but um, didn't have a clue, right? But the more and more, like you, the the older and older you get, the more you realize, man, that's it, you know. Like this is literally really how things work and there's also not like something like and then plot twist there's a big surprise but it's just like no like that's literally how it is you know <laughs> and you're like hmm okay now that sucks <laughs> i don't know yeah sometimes sometimes i don't know uh but, um so I guess it also stems from the realism, right? Like, for me, there's also always, like, this happy fool who, you know, or you can be the bitter realist and maybe good would be something in between. I mean, to live in a world where you just have perceptions which are completely not, fit, not fitting the reality is obviously pretty flawed, but maybe, maybe sometimes I could also see things a little bit less analytical. Right, like I'm, I'm very analytical in how I see things, and also very hard with. I mean, hard with judgment sounds harsh, but I don't want to talk myself into something. Like, if I believe something is how it is, I just say, okay, you know, that's how it is. You know, I don't want to re. I don't want to uh, talk it into beauty, yeah, if it's not beautiful, you know. But yeah, I don't know. I give you one example. If COVID, it's like if I feel that COVID is completely, um, you know, limiting my life in many ways, I would not get to the idea to tell you how beautiful COVID has been because since COVID is around, I had so much more time for my garden. No, I won't do that. I will tell you, hey, COVID sucks big time, and I, I you know what I'm saying, right? Like, it's it's not that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, there are like some people who do that. They say appreciation is a blessing. And um, I mean, it's it's nice, you know, that you appreciate what you have. But it's also don't get too high on that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Came for the Ironclad Run State for the Existential Crisis. It's not so bad. It's not. It's not in a like in a mel melancholic way. Yeah? It's it's not that I'm I'm mel melancholic about that or something, but it just you know. Um, these 
do you know like the state where you have like a lot of i don't know i don't uh, like dreams it's not even dreams that's that's the wrong word but there you're sitting there and you don't know what the life has to bring to you right and the more you get like the, the older you get the more you get kind of an idea of how your life will proceed how it will be right and also not like the room like the room for error goes not even expectations like it just even if it's like, like I'm very thank thankful about what I have, you know, like, uh, it's great, you know, I have a very, very loving lo wife, beautiful children, I, I, I'm not like uh, complaining, not at all, but it's the, the, um, the spectrum, right, the amount of variety you can have goes more and more into, um, um, how do you say that? In if you are 20, you you the, the room of your adultery is a very very big ga gap between like you don't know what you can expect and there is a broad window right and once you are getting older and older the amount of not even of choices or options but many people like uh, the window goes closer and closer and closer like smaller and smaller right so at some point you will take a look at your life and you will know okay that's like exactly that like that's it you know i mean not i'm, I'm still too young for that probably but um at some point you're like okay so this is how i lived my life or whatever happened and it will also not change too much any longer um but yeah so um yeah, I just sharing. It's not even it's not even for me too much because honestly for me it's rather I want to avoid that, you know. I want to try that this does not happen, you know. That one day I wake up and that suddenly suddenly I am I don't know 55 and nothing changed the last 10 years. You know these guys like I mean for me it would be really really sad if if I would if I would meet some old friend I, I know maybe I told you, um, I, I probably have told you before, but um, you, you meet a friend after 10 years and he tells you, hey, you're like exactly the same old guy from like 10 years ago. And people mean that as a compliment, but I mean, actually, it's a pretty big offense, right? Like if you, if you tell somebody that nothing changed for him in the last 10 years, I mean, that's pretty sad because that also means that you didn't develop yourself in the last 10 years if you're still the very same old guy. I mean, if I think about like what changed in my last 10 years, like it's tremendous. So, um, yeah. Adult tree or adult hut. Adulthood? Maybe it's adulthood. Yeah. It's all, yeah, what? Mr. Kais is like and slays his fire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, also maybe uh, taking the, the bow around like or the the reference to games right i mean for games i don't know like in games i see a world and it has very clear rules and there's no freaking bullshit attached like in slay the spire you have game rules and i know what to expect and nobody's bullshitting me that is pretty cool you know i mean i don't know like uh, that's like talking about what makes for me like the the beauty of games Pretty much this, yeah. Hmm. J. Um. J. Told the ones. J. Told the ones. I probably mispronounced it. Thanks very much for the sub. And what COVID made you stream again twelve months ago, right? Yeah. Instead, following my projects to actually live in Thailand for a while and and um. Yeah, and um, learn the language and the culture. So it's mm, yeah. I mean, as much as I enjoy this here, it is still that I would have done different things if I would not be located. Yeah, Is there a German school in Thailand for my kids? No, no. Like I usually do it. That um, I travel over, make like very intensively. I, I have a teacher over there, and we are learning every day. And usually after, like I usually stay two months, 
and after one month my family comes visiting me and yeah the rest i also study a little bit here and um, spend my time usually in vienna but we are traveling a lot yeah um by thailand what fascinates me the culture the culture how people are how chill people are how the food is amazing but yeah i guess it's a lot about the people like how they perceive how they perceive life how they are uh, with each other yeah so it's, it's a very friendly culture and um I love massage, so the Thai massage are amazing. So if I'm there, I have like one or two every day, and it's pretty amazing because, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot complain. So, um, well, Heimza says, "Aren't people in Thailand a bit dishonest? They always smile, smile even if they are angry at you." Ah, uh, it's not exactly this. It's rather that they have respect for your emotions and they don't want to bring your emotions into a wrong state of uh, mind. So therefore, they don't want to upset you. And it's funny that you say that because um, that's exactly what you learn if you do not live in Thailand, right? And you think, hey, maybe, uh, yeah, basically what you say. And this is such a misconception because... Once you, once you live there, um, you also understand, I mean, you know, it's not that you cannot detect it. I mean, they do have ways to tell you that they are not in line with something. But just because you don't understand that doesn't mean that they are dishonest. It's just that means that you didn't understand it. You know, <laughs> it's like um, there are so many Americans in Thailand, which is which are like, I mean, I'm like, you know, like rounded Americans and blah, yalla, yalla. But um, literally 90% of the cases where somebody is like, where you really think, man, this is mega hyper rude. It's usually an American, like uh, very few exceptions. Oh, actually, Russians are also some, Chinese are also some. Actually, maybe it's not 100%, but a lot of the times, you know, you can usually hear it if somebody yells. And, and yelling is very, very preserved for... Um, like complaining, complaining loudly, that's usually Americans. Now, talking loudly, that's usually rather in the, the direction. And I don't mean that this uh, in a... It's just cultural differences, and only because you do not understand them doesn't mean that they are in the wrong, right? Like, why I'm saying that is because it's like really... Uh, I have safe embarrassment there. Like, you always like listen to that and and um, they are very rude and the idea is those people have to adjust because i don't know why you tell me yeah but um, somehow that's like the idea like if you visit some country they have to adjust to you because uh, i don't know why okay um Heimzo says rich Russians are also super rude abroad. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, again, like, it's always, like, in different ways. Yeah. Um, like, it, it's not like everybody, right? I mean, there are some, like, the cultural differences are just different in, in many ways. So, usually, Germans are not very loud and th they don't complain very loud. But I had the feeling that they are somehow weird with the, with the, yeah, with the women there a little bit. Like, kind of in the idea that, you know, they, um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like with the, um, it's not even only sex tourism, but generally speaking, like that they have the feeling they, yeah. Um, yeah, there were some, some weird, um, sorry. So I guess nobody is like being excluded there. It's just always, it's always <laughs> good to see, you know, because that means like whenever there's some clash, you know, whenever there's some cultural clash, I think it's better to see what you could do better, right? I mean, I get very well along in this country without, like, misunderstand, like, without too many misunderstandings, Like, right? I mean, I guess the rule of thumb in Thailand is try your best to comfort your, your, uh, to comfort the other person. It's not always, like, aligning with my values, right? I mean, I'm a very honest person as well, but... If I'm in Thailand, I respect the rules. 
and therefore I also always smile. Like I am a different person in Thailand, and um, I guess I guess I do it just when I'm there. And once you understood the culture, yeah, then you can still do it different, right? But like my approach is first to completely adjust, like just exactly behave or try to behave as they do. And um, of course, speaking the language is like uh, uh, the minimum requirement, I feel. Yeah, because without speaking, even, without even being able to speak the language, how do you even connect to people, right? And um, yeah, and uh, if you speak with them in Thai, you will see that they are suddenly genuinely friendly, you know, and um, yeah, I guess, I guess that, you know. Mm. So yeah, but um, <clears throat> yeah, so much about my my reality currently, and I mean I don't know with what COVID basically uh, does is also um, I mean there are some ways how you can travel. With restrictions, I'm also super, I know, I know, now we are also a little bit political, but I guess after 50 Ironclad games, we can also do that a little bit, but it just, um, travel restrictions, I mean, I was super surprised when I heard that, that, I mean, I can understand partly that countries don't want that people travel into the country, but there are also many countries which are actually saying people are not allowed to leave the country, and I'm like, what is that really like the 21st century and um there are also many restrictions where i really wonder like um yeah it's just but of course you know that i'm kind uh, uh, a freedom loving person right so if somebody tells me hey your freedom is limited now because of whatever i am always very allergic against that so um yeah that's probably just because of my upbringing but also because i think it's pretty cool that every person has the right to move freely <laughs> yeah so i personally was um i mean it, it doesn't even apply to austria right but to australia <laughs> no i don't know yeah it's it's super sick yeah um 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 What could it be that we were too entitled to our freedom? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess those questions are maybe to be asked nowadays, right? Like, um, it's... Um, in what entitled to the free? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see that it can also be different, but I'm not sure whether it's exactly uh, a good direction you know <laughs> mm. yeah also also Arborist said honestly people are really irresponsible so it's not surprising that uh, those restrictions comes into place you know freedom means that you <laughs> that you are not getting controlled right I mean that's that's the definition of freedom, uh, that you can actually say, hey, maybe that's not the 100% clever thing to do, but I can do it anyways because I'm free, you know, because I have freedom. If you, if you, if you de define freedom, like you say, hey, you can do everything, but only if it makes sense to me, otherwise you're not allowed to do that, right? I mean, then it's not freedom, yeah? It's just like, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you're, 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 you're free to do everything what you want, but only if it's like, if it's like in the window of what I deem to be responsible or whatever. Like, I don't know. But again, maybe I'm not. Um, yeah. It's, um, yeah, yeah, maybe freedom becomes a dangerous thing. I'm also talking a little bit out of my ass here. Like, um, I'm, I just want to share with you my thoughts. It's not, it's not elaborated. Like, usually I'm thinking about this first, but <clears throat> since, I don't know. In the last year, I also put my stream a little bit different. Like, 
yeah i don't know i don't care too much about restrictions so if i want to share something i just do and um, if i want to share my thoughts i just do as an anarchist no i'm not an anarchist i'm not like freedom for anybody there's i don't know you know it's like there's uh, yeah there's of course of course in covid everybody has an opinion anyways and um, there everybody is an expert the expert that's clear um yeah it's um it's certainly not an easy line to draw i'm just telling you that like i i'm like just surprised at what people uh, what what's possible honestly i remember you know there was it was one year ago and i had uh i had a dialogue with my wife yeah um yes despite being already married married for over a decade we still have conversations with each other on a regular base basis and it was at the time where COVID actually it was I think March or something and or February I don't know I only know that like COVID um, was like big in China so it, a lot of people got infected in China and the Chinese took measurements yeah and these measurements were that people are not uh, are not um, are not allowed to go outside and you saw like uh, big cars with a big disinfect big disinfection and they sprayed everywhere and and this was really a post apocalyptic scenario right well the door shut like a lot of stuff you know a lot of pretty sick stuff and i know the conversation i had with my wife and we were like this would never be possible in europe you know, like it was completely far away, like so far away that you could really call it a post-apocalyptic scenario, right? And half a year later, you know, they are pretty much doing very similar things in Europe. And it seems to be possible, you know, like what I'm saying is the, the, the conversation I had with my wife was that will never be possible, you know. I mean, not never, never, but, you know, in a way like... We are so far away from that, you know, and suddenly it seems we are not that far away from that, right? And or even did the same thing, you know, so um, it was just shocking to me, you know, um, it intercepted my perception of what um, what is even possible, you know and yeah things like laws got um, changed and yeah i mean it's yeah kind of a reality shock but also in a way you know salami tactic it's if it comes like slowly you accept it part by part right and if you just remember how it's been like a year ago, maybe if you remember what it's been like two years ago. Um, but people do adjust, you know, and they accept the new reality. I mean, people are even talking about the new reality, you know. And I'm like, yeah, right, the new reality. That's sure, you know. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, schon hören dafür genommen werden. Aber it's halt, yeah, it's... Um, Yeah. It's not black or white. I'm just saying, like, of course, it's like uh, something in between, but it's it's just, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's um, yeah. I I don't know, guys. Just just wanted to share that. It's pretty, I mean, I, I don't have like an opinion on what should be done or whatever, right? I'm just saying, hey, somehow it's weird, you know, weird times, very weird times. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, also. Yeah. It's just, you know, like I saw this video the other day, right, or my wife showed me. And 
it's about toddlers, right? And I think the subscription or like the name of the title was something about um, like it's very cute. These toddlers, like I think the name was something. Everything is disinfection, disinfection stuff. And then these toddlers were running around and they pressed like like as a disinfection thing, but they also pressed different kind of um, items, right? So they press the table like this, and then they do this. And I'm, and it seemed to be a very funny thing, you know? Like people loved it because it's so freaking cute. And I'm like, I do you know what like how bad that is like for for toddlers to get like disinfected all the time? I mean, it's like freaking the i don't know you know it's like i'm partly really in disbelief how like what's going on you know um yeah it's um and yeah it's um also time of paralysis you know because if somehow everybody has an opinion and nothing can... I mean, that's like the danger also if you don't have... Like, uh, like if you cannot have it cleanly with argument, but it's, it's suddenly politized and everybody has an opinion and you cannot really do it in a rational way, right? I mean, that that is when it becomes really dangerous. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking national socialism here. I mean, that also definitely went like peu a peu, little by little, by the way. So it's not... You know, completely, uh, and it's not comparable. But what I'm saying is, the the idea of like the mechanics is very. I mean, it's not. Compar you know what I'm saying, right? Like this, little by little, change by change, a little bit like by a little bit, and um, people are just getting used to the new realities, right? And I don't know, yeah. Um, it's I know when you know when like we talked about this half a year ago right I mean I don't do that often like talking about this or giving you my opinion on these things but do you remember half a year ago when we had exactly the same discussion right and I told you or maybe it was even a three quarter year ago and I think the measurements got into place and Many people were like, hooray, like these measurements has to be taken. And I personally was a little bit skeptical. And there's always this, um, yeah, but man, like these measurements, they have to be in place, right? And I was like, look, it's always, I mean, maybe you remember, but I was like, hey, maybe it's always good to see both sides of the coin, right? Like it's not only positive, but you pay a price for that, like, the iron price no not the iron price you pay a very heavy price for those measurements and these prices are stuff like yeah the toddlers are suddenly like this or for example my kids i mean my kids are now in school for two years and my my one daughter asked me the other day whether they always were like whether they have always worn masks in school right and I mean, the first year they didn't wear a mask because there was no COVID, but it's literally like they can probably not even remember a time which I was without a mask. Facial recognition for kids, completely important. Yeah, Facial recognition is super mandatory. And you know, it's, if you grow up without facial recognition, you might not learn it like ever again yeah? if you get uh, kept by that. So this is the price you pay. So many stories, you know. There are some elderly, like we are, we are on a walk, um, like we are at the street, and there's some elderly woman, and like we are at the traffic lights, right? And she's a little bit too close, and my daughter says, "Hey," but she's not now putting the um, the distance, you know, the social distancing, and. Like, uh, I'm like, that's, that's shown okay, yeah. Um, but it's, like, kids and, like, this social distancing, like, it's... 
you know, there is always a cost, you know, it's, it's like so like usually you should learn how to be with other people and now you learn that everybody is like a virus uh, infector and you need to spend like social distancing at least um whatever one meter 50 or whatever and it's it's tough i don't know um yeah yeah it's a lot um it's a lot to eat up right i mean um it's you know, because nowadays I also have the feeling it's like like religion, you know. Like, how many times somebody wanted to convince me in the last year of something regarding COVID, whether the measurements are completely in place or completely not in place. It's a completely radical thing which splits the society, you know. it's There's no, like, middle ground somehow. Uh, it's not, like, if you would be rational and analytical, you would try to find some middle ground and you would say, hey... This, these measurements do make some sense, these do not, and maybe we should also be a little bit, uh, we should also keep the good of people in mind. Like, what is still, still human and what is not? Like, what can you do? And maybe sometimes you might want to risk a little bit more for more humanity. I don't know, right? Um, but n n nuances, exactly. But nowadays, like, either you're for it or you're against it, right? I mean, it's like, what what is that you know i don't know right? it's like yeah ich, ich habe echt keine ahnung yeah it's yeah it's completely fanatic uh, fanatism yeah it's uh, it's very fanatic nowadays and yeah i don't yeah i don't know i don't know guys yeah in all of this is within a year you know like it's a lot of it, it's a lot to suck up yeah <laughs> but yeah um Eh? Wooden Louis says I was, uh, was a bit scared you will start a Schwobelei right here. What is a Schwobelei? <laughs> mm. Ah, Shonzo says somebody has to ask me about vaccines. <laughs> Let's go full on this. <laughs> yeah, the vaccines. I heard I heard many people believe like in Verschwörungstheorie. What is Verschwörungstheorie? Like um Yeah, klar. Uh, conspiracy, right? Yeah, big big vaccine conspiracy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's the next thing, right? Like either either you're um um you are for the measurements or you are a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I don't know. I have I have heard all kind of stuff in the last year, man. Yeah, that's pretty. Um. And also the elderly people, by the way. Yeah, because like it's this also big argument like the elderly people they are like um, to be protected and. I have had some conversation with uh, conversations with elderly people, and I mean, I don't know. I mean, I can just go in front of my PC and stream for you guys. Um, but the elderly, pe the elderly are usually big in social contacts. Like, not even kidding. Like, if you would ask me who got hurt the most, I would probably say the elderly and kids. Kids because <clears throat> they they are very like the upbringing in these in these uh, like under these circumstances is completely sick and um the elderly they are super sad really i mean they they get like cut from social context with their with their relatives i mean i don't know it sucks big time uh, mm. things to have in mind you know things to have in mind i'm not saying hey because of that you have to do this and this I'm just saying, keep the eyes open. It's not always like black or white, but um, if if you put things uh, like this into place, there are a lot of things which come with it, uh, like Hamsterdam. Do you know Hamsterdam? I watched the other day, you know, where you actually create a new environment, new rules, and you don't know what will happen, you know, and kind of like everybody wearing a mask is exactly this like um 
your immune system, for example, doesn't get trained any longer. So it's pretty, you know, you don't even know what that will make like in a long time um, with your immune system, for example, right? Because if you train it less because of less germs, maybe at the end you will, you might not even be less ill, but if you get ill, you might get even worse ill, you know, for example, yeah. Of course, I'm not an expert on this, so, but I'm just saying if you, it's not, it's not, um, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, I'm unprecedented until now, so it's not that you can say, hey, these measurements are just 100% good and let's go for that, right? <laughs> I had the I had the one talk with a um, a worker from us and um, it goes like, "Hey man, you're like coughing. Like I hope you're you're fine." <coughs> yeah, yeah, but it's not it's not COVID. And I uh, I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." It's like no worries, man. I've, it's, it's whatever. And so yeah, yeah, because I have a normal cold, and these do really exist. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> they they do really exist. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay. Um, Was the wire tough for you to understand the spoken English? I actually downloaded it on, on, on Amazon Prime or whatever, so I didn't even have subtitles. But I have watched it the, like, in, in the past, so even if I sometimes cannot um, understand everything, um, yeah. <laughs> 